If one does crash into a real space gravity well's mass shadow while in hyperspace traveling at superluminal speeds, the result on the ship can range from minimal damage to utter obliteration depending on the scale of collision and the sort of gravity well. However, the same impact, however slight, will result in a massive energy surplus discharge cascade arising in real space at the point of contact between the gravity well there and the ship's hull while it is traveling through hyperspace at superluminal speeds. Such hyperspace accidents rarely occur, most often due to the many wandering black holes throughout the galaxy. However, on occasion, hyperspace collisions have caused the fracturing of planets and the implosive supernova detonation of stars. The five main hyperlanes are established only for convenience between the most traveled two star systems and marked by the oldest hyperspace beacons. While the rest of hyperspace is considered to be essentially the same zero resistance energy substance, but is otherwise largely unexplored due to the mass shadows of real space gravity wells. Although galactic topography only changes very gradually, if one were to look for the locations in space connected by the hyperspace lanes used since the era of the Infinite Empire, a billion light years later, one would find them in vastly different places. The existence of the hyperlanes may be due to mere convention, but the existence of hyperspace is due to a very real phenomenon that occurs in the center of every spiral galaxy. At the center of the galaxy, to the lower left of Coruscant on a standard map, is a cluster of so many supernovae, wandering black holes and other gravity wells so entangled together that it has made hyperspace exploration of galactic core impossible. Aside from only a few systems, there has been little life encountered from beyond the so-called galactic divide. For as many populated planets and as much explored space as has stood for almost 100,000 years on one side of the galaxy. The other side has remained wild space, unexplored and presumed devoid of inhabited planets. Just as there is one side of the galaxy whose gravitic topology slopes down slowly and is populated by many inhabited star systems, the opposite side is a steep gravitic drop into the unknown regions. The reason for galactic topography's accumulation of the stellar slope's gradation differential is simple and has to do with the rotation over the hundreds and thousands of eons of the pivoting poles of the supermassive black hole in the galaxy's central core. As the poles of this stationary gravitic phenomenon process gradually, like the spinning of a centrifuge inside a gyroscope, they push the stellar mass of the galaxy's spiral-armed disk with them, causing a buildup of coreward star systems to accumulate opposite the direction of the galaxy's spiraling arms. The result of this is that there is more hyperspace on one side of the galaxy than the other. That is to say, on one side there is so much activity in light because it is during hyperspace day, while on the other side there is little activity or life because it is hyperspace night on that side. However, the cause is the building up of stellar mass on one side to compensate as the galactic center of gravity rotates around a central pivot point in the form of the supermassive black hole and galactic core. In the same manner, the presence of gravity wells in the form of stellar mass shadows causes the blue light illumination within a hyperspace tunnel. There is opposite this form of illumination a form of hyperspace darkness that occurs on the night side of the galaxy, where there is less stellar mass accumulated along a steeper gravitic slope. Thus, the light of hyperspace shines only on half the galaxy 
and this is due to the precession of the poles of the supermassive black hole at galactic core. The same principle that causes hyperspace to occur is at the core of the hyperdrive engine's technology. By creating a force field around a ship, and then phasing this force field's component wavelengths to a velocity faster than photons in a void, the ship can be allowed to slip out of real space dimensional constrictions on astrophysical and quantum mechanical principles, and travel through a limitless realm of zero resistance energy that exists on a sub quanta scale, faster than light speed. This same principle of phasing the wavelengths of a force field surrounding a ship is at the core of the method by which hyperspace comes into existence through omission of tachyons from the poles of the supermassive galactic core black hole. The tachyons from the black hole's poles gradually arc upward or below and around to connect to the poles of each star in the galaxy and from there to each planet, and thus each moon, each satellite, etc., forming the topography of hyperspace around their gravity wells' mass shadows. In a sense, when the force field around the ship generated by the hyperdrive engine is activated, it is only a means of removing the veil of matter energy from before the eyes of those of us biological beings that exist within this space-time continuum, and seeing by the light of tachyons into a realm below subquantum tachyon illuminated scales, where zero resistance energy exists at faster than light speeds, and the physical principles we take for granted in our own universe do not apply.